Hey guys, uh, thanks so much for tuning in. We are so glad that you guys are joining us and that um, we are able to offer fusion worship online. And so this is gonna be our setup for the next few weeks. It's a little bit different, it's a little weird. We were not planning for this as of last Wednesday, um, but this is our reality that we're living in right now is that we're gonna be coming to you guys live. We're gonna be offering fusion worship small groups online. Um, and so this is going to become our new normal. And so the way this is going to work is in just a little bit, we're going to play a game. I'm going to have Logan come play a game on screen and you guys can also participate in the game. Um, and then we're going to have worship. We're going to have a message. And then tonight we're going to have small groups. Um, and so small groups tonight, the way those are going to work is we're going to use a program called Zoom. And so if you haven't already received an email, you will receive an email with the time that we've slotted for your small group to meet and a meeting ID. Super simple. You can use that meeting ID, click the link in the email, your parents can click it. It'll even give you a phone number to call in if you don't want to use your computer or you don't want a video chat. You can just pick up your cell phone, call in, and you can listen and participate just like everyone else. And so it's very simple. You can download the Zoom app on your cell phone. You can download the Zoom app or just log in using your computer. Very simple. If you've got questions about it or you ways that you like you can't get logged in, reach out to me or Jen. We're learning it as well, um, but it's super simple. Um, and so I feel confident that you guys will be able to join us this evening for small groups. And so, like I said, we're going to play a game. So Logan, come join. And today, since we're filming this on Tuesday, it is St. Patrick's Day. Yes. So we are playing a St. Patrick's game. And the way this works, you can't cheat and look at my computer screen, All right. but the way that this is going to work is on the TV here, we're going to watch someone from Ireland talking. And I'm going to give you the question and then play the video for you. And you've got to guess or figure out the answer to the question. All right? All right. They have thick accents. And students, the way you can participate at home is I'm going to show the clip. First one in the comment section or in the chat to give the correct answer, I will send you in the snail mail a $5 Chick-fil-A gift card. So I promise I'll spray it with Lysol. I won't lick it. I'll peel and stick and we'll mail that for you guys. And Logan, you just get to do this. So All right. our first question is what country was Bernard Kilkenny from? The court heard how Mr. Bernard Kilkenny, an off-duty guarder from County Mayo, was in Dublin for the All-Ireland final when the alleged incident occurred. Whilst chatting with friends on Talbot Street, he was suddenly struck on the buttocks. Upon turning around, he saw the accused, Robert Montague of Bram Stoker Crescent, whom he said had adopted a martial arts pose. Mr. Montague was heard to say, what are you bleeding looking at? But before an answer could be given, the accused kicked the plaintiff in the the chin, knocking him backwards into a shopping trolley. Mr. Montague then pushed the trolley in the direction of Amian Street. Upon reaching Connolly Station, he removed the cowboy hat the plaintiff was wearing and urinated in it before placing it back on his head. Oh my gosh, what a roller coaster. That's wonderful. So, what country was Bernard Kilkenny from? Oh gosh, they said that? It was at the very start, dude. Um, I bet they've already answered. His last name is Kilkenny. How about Kilkenny? From Kilkenny? No, he's from Mayo, Mayo. I don't yeah, even you know. know. She has a thick accent. That's so I also, I liked the shopping buggy and yeah, the um, that was quite a... cowboy hat and struck a martial arts pose. <laughs> <laughs> um, struck on the buttocks. Yeah, so in this next video, next comments, what animal did the cranky old man mention? How you doing? How you get off? A Sunday. Good for Dasa. Eh? Hey, Pip, Wally McAteer, now in fun. Eh, bad day rooster. Eh? Good for the Royal Hotel. The Royal? And it. Huh? I say that's some day. It's a lovely day. Good, mate. It's a good day. And what you look up with that one to the bike, do you do all in the bank, yeah? This is crap. <laughs> Gosh. What animal did he mention? I think I actually knew this one. I actually caught it. 
I think he might have said rooster. Rooster. I rooster. thought I heard that one. Right. Sweet. Oh All right. Gosh. We're going to do one more. All right. This last one is how many sheep were missing? It was about a night. There'd be a full moon there. About a night. And it should be bright out. And could anyone go up in the mountains about a night? Sure. Well, there was 45 sheep missing, like, and the lambs and everything. The sheep just count, just count out the nice bit of money, like. <laughs> be done about you, nothing. <laughs> I heard him say sheep missing. I have no yeah. idea. Yeah, no. Um, 132, 45, or he wasn't talking about sheep at all. All of those are very possible. <laughs> I, I, I thought I heard a five, so I'm going to go with 45. 45? That's my only... All right. Boom! Dylan, look at nice. you, dude. Nice. Good job. Do I get a gift card? No. Thanks for being here, though. I'm really proud of you. You can Thanks. lead us in worship in a little bit. All right. Thanks. <laughs> so, if you won, I will be in touch. I will send you a $5 Chick-fil-A gift card to our winners. Um, maybe I'll take Logan to Chick-fil-A or actually just through the drive through because you can't go inside. Um, but... Uh, thank you guys for playing along with us with our fun game. And so what we're going to do uh, now is we're going to head into a time of worship. Uh, but before we do that, I'm going to pray. Um, and then Logan is going to come lead us in a song before Cole gives us our message. So let us pray. Father God, thank you that we can gather in this unique way. Um, it's a little bit different today. It looks a little bit different. It feels a little bit different. But we are just glad that we can still connect with community. Lord, I ask that you will be with us for these next 15, 20 minutes, that we will just engage, that we'll put those notifications aside, that we'll ignore those text messages, um, that we will be able just to sing along, that we'll be able to hear the words that Cole has for us, and that we will just completely put our attention and our focus on you for these next couple of minutes. It's in your most holy name we pray. Amen.
What's up, you guys? It's Cole on your screen, and uh, thanks for pausing your episode of BoJack Horseman or The Office or whatever you're watching, because I know you're not doing homework right now. Um, so today we're going to be exploring our past. Ooh, scary, right? For me, it's, yeah, yeah, scary. Uh, so I'm going to give a little, like, glimpse into uh, some of my testimony. Um, so the end of my eighth grade year through the start of my freshman year at high school, I was running with a really bad crew. Um, I found myself doing things that I really shouldn't have been doing. And at the time, I didn't think I was doing like anything wrong until my parents found out. And then I got in, like a heap of trouble. Um, and there was like a two month period where I really felt like kind of worthless, um, like not loved and just like ate myself up with guilt. Like I had messed up big time. Um, and there have been plenty of instances since like after I started following Jesus that I've still fallen short. Um, and for many of us, we can relate to that. Um, we've messed up big time and came to that point of like extreme guilt. Um, all of us have made a mistake that we regret at some point in our lives. Uh, either you did something to ruin a relationship or said something behind someone's back, uh, or you've hurt people that you care about. Like we've all made mistakes. But something that I've been learning through my own walk with Jesus is... Uh, that his love is so much stronger than anything that we can experience because like even at those low points, God can still use us. Um, you know, your past mistakes don't prevent God from using you in the future. And when we bring our mess to the cross, Jesus redeems us, restores us, and can use us in spite of our mess. Uh, there's no better embodiment of this than Peter. Uh, Peter's actions and the truths that we learn from his interactions with Jesus are very applicable to uh, our interactions with Jesus today. So we pick up with Peter after Jesus is resurrected from the grave, but we find Peter appears to have given up with his relationship with Christ. And maybe some of us have been there before. Um, and when we look at this interaction between Jesus and Peter, like post mess up Peter, we see that Jesus restores him and sends him out. So let's set up the scene here. Peter was back fishing. Uh, he seemed to have deemed that he was disqualified in spite of what he got to witness over the past couple of years. Uh, he probably had self-diagnosed as a failure and was done with ministry because he had denied his Savior three times after he said he was de devoted and would never deny him. So Peter is beloved by all of us because he's like us. Uh, he had all the failures that we're so familiar with in our own lives. First, he overestimated himself and underestimated temptation. Second, he thought he was more committed than he was, and he thought he loved the Lord more than he did. Uh, and third, he thought he could face any trial triumphantly, but found out that he couldn't. By the time we get to this point, even though he had seen the risen Christ, he was really a broken man. So Peter went back to what he knew. Back in Matthew 4:19, Jesus met these fishermen, including Peter, told them to drop their nets, leave it all behind, and he would make them fishers of men. You remember they all dropped everything and followed him. This was over three years later, and Peter had led his fisherman friends back to fishing in the first part of this chapter because it's what they knew. Now Jesus appeared on the shore and asked if they had caught anything, and they said they hadn't. And Jesus told them to cast their nets on the other side of the boat, where they caught so many fish that they couldn't haul in the net. When that happened, John said to Peter, It's the Lord. And Peter took off his cloak and dove in the water, because you have to be naked to see Jesus. I don't know. Swimming about a hundred yards to shore to see Jesus. Fishing was not what God had called them to. Peter was the leader. He needed to be restored, and behind him would come the others. God had very significant plans for this denying, impatient, impulsive leader by the name of Peter. And as we look at the section of scripture, we're going to see what is essentially a call to faithfulness for any believer, any disciple of Christ, anyone who's going to serve the Lord. This is a characteristic of a committed follower to Jesus. To see what our Lord elicits out of Peter is what he wants out of all of us. This is a wonderful model. Jesus ate breakfast with the disciples and then focused specifically on Peter telling him to feed his sheep and where Jesus told Peter to follow me, follow Jesus, not me. So let's pick up there. John 21, 15 through 25. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John. Oh, also, so John always refers to him as Simon Peter, which kind of gives us the whole picture like before and after. Um, I think there's like one exception in the gospel of John, um, but John chose to call him Simon Peter. But Jesus just said, Simon, son of John. Now that must have gotten his attention because Simon was his name before he met the Lord and Peter was his name after he met the Lord. But Peter had fallen so short that the Lord was now using his old name because Peter was acting like an old self. You know, it's kind of like your mom using your full name when you like poop on the floor or something. Um, 
But so Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? And Peter said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to Peter, feed my lambs. Jesus said to him a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, tend my sheep. He said to Peter the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he had said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. So this must have been a shock. Peter didn't necessarily want to be pointed out. Uh, he would have liked to blend into the group, but he was targeted and the Lord called him out. And three times Jesus asked him if he loved him, one for each occasion of denial. For each time that he denied him, he got an opportunity to be restored. And here's the restoration. It's as simple as, Simon, son of John, do you love me? That's the question. When you act disobediently, you're declaring love for something other than Jesus. And Peter had done just that. Jesus had asked him, do you love me more than these? What he means by this is, do you love me more than these fish, these nets, these ways of your former life? This is the classic repentance from your old life towards the ways of Christ. Like Peter, we're called to love Jesus more than our old ways of life and give our life to Christ. So take a note from Peter, repent and be restored in the love of Christ. Hey guys, I'm back for a third time. Thank you guys for joining us today uh, for Fusion Online. Um, we know it's different and it's a little bit uncomfortable, but we appreciate you guys giving us a chance and trying something new with us together. Um, make sure in the following weeks you are following us on our social media, so on Instagram and Facebook. Um, that's where all the important information will be posted, and that's how we will be reaching out and contacting you about worship, about volunteering opportunities, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and now you can go ahead and subscribe to us on YouTube so you can be in the loop of all these messages as they come out every week. Uh, we'll be doing this again 11 o'clock, I believe, every Wednesday. And you can go ahead, subscribe. And then if you want to be notified, you can hit the little notification bell, and that will tell you every Wednesday when we have posted a new video, so you can hop right in and join us in the chat. Um, and then the last thing i got to say is Sundays we will be streaming our messages live on Facebook. So we're working on getting YouTube, but make sure you have access to Facebook, uh, whether you have your own or you use a relatives or your, you know, your parents if you're too cool. Um, but join us on Facebook Live Sunday morning, 9.30 and 11 o'clock for worship.